welcome back to yet another fabulous episode of our talk show with experts. Manatona, my immigration expert, Rahul Reddy Garu. Rahul Garu, thank you so much for being on the show today, Andy. Thanks for inviting me, Garu. Guys, call our expert here, Rahul Reddy Garu, on 1833-882-8872. The number again is 1833-882-8872. Watch us on Yup TV. Facebook, YouTube, Sling TV, World BB TV, and Dish Network. All right, folks, coming to the topic for today. Visa bulletin changes. It sounds like music to our ears, Andy. A beacon of hope for immigrants and H-1B visa holders. Um, Rahul Garo, what is going on? You know, why is this the topic today? Is something, you know, good happening? Is it just rumors or, you know, uh, what's going on? Well, we don't know whether it's good or bad, but it depends on how the people will perceive. Okay. If the priority dates, the administration is not going to move it to be current right now in the month of October, though, and if they don't decide to change the way that they are doing it right now, mm-hmm. and they are going to go with the old policies that they have, then it yeah. might take forever for our guys to get the green card. I mean, green card is history. Um, an EB1, which is, for example, if you get an Oscar, if you get a Nobel Prize, for example, if you become Microsoft CEO, I mean, that's an extraordinary ability. I mean, Microsoft yeah. CEO and Google CEO. Even if you become a Microsoft CEO and Google CEO, if you want to get the green card right now, there is a waiting period of 11 years to get the green card for Indian nationals. So. Wow. Okay. So if somebody gets a Nobel Prize right now from India, and then let's say, for example, they want to contribute to the, uh, or they get, uh, yeah, and and they want to get the green card right now, it's going to take about 11 plus years for them to file the additional status. So unless there is a change right now in the administration, it's going to, it's not going to go anywhere and, uh, and it's going to stay like this forever. Not forever, I would say. It will go much worse than what it is right now. As mm-hmm. we see the EB1s getting approved or people are getting more into extraordinary ability, EB1Cs are getting approved very frequently. The backlog in EB1 is also going to continue. It may not be 11 years, but it will still be a very long period of time for the people to get the green card in EB1. So mm-hmm. unless the administration... Now, of course, we have seen that Raja Krishnamurti, along with 55 other congressmen, requested the administration to unilaterally move the priority dates to become current. But the administration in the press release, in in the press statement said, no, it's the Congress. Do you not Uh, know? You've been in an administration for 30 years. Uh, uh, You've been in in the administration for eight years. You've been a senator for 30 years. You don't know that the Congress is not acting right now. So can you not act? Didn't Obama acted where he made the uh, approximately 1 million people who are undocumentedly present in this country who are children who came in and and uh, and they gave them the employment authorization? There are a lot of things that they are doing. Even they try to do for family members who have been waiting for the green card for a long period of time from South American countries to get a uh, parole to come into the United States. It didn't work out, but they tried it. Can you not do this one? So my request to the administration is that, hey, don't move your duty to the Congress. You can do it. So you Rahul, can try just, to do it. Just to follow up on, on your statement right now, why do you think that's, that is happening? I feel like everybody is just sort of passing the buck from one person to the other. Now, like you said, they have been in an administrative uh, capability for about 30 years now. Uh, why do you think that that they still uh, feel like they can get away with making a statement that hey, you know, it needs to go to the Congress and not actually take uh, ownership? Well, you know, it's been historically uh, Clinton uh, tried to do it, uh, Bush tried to do it, Obama tried to do it. They all failed. Obama realized in the last one two years, hey, Bean, this is not working out, and then he started right. moving moving unitarily taking the action by himself though. So what I'm suggesting to Biden administration is, hey, do it by yourself right now. Don't wait for the Congress. It's always been like that. I mean, immigration is, an, is, an, is a thing they were, uh, the Congress should have passed, but they're not passing. They're not voting. They're not putting it to vote. We have had the 
the amount of green cards to be given to the employment uh, has been increased in the Senate. It passed through the Senate, but yet the House at that point of time um, did not put it to the vote at that point of time. Right. So when the Senate is passing, the House is delaying. When the House is passing, the Senate is delaying. Senate is delaying. So, so it's kind of going ping pong in there. But yeah. administration need to uh, administration need to realize that it's not going to happen. I don't now, know why. Why the first came in, he did sign a lot of this sort of administrative policy, overruling right. uh, a lot of the previous uh, parties right. or previous right. administrations' uh, rulings at that point. So it's well, not like they don't know yeah. or aren't aware. So what is it that people can do to urge this more and more early? Um, they, need to cry, they need to cry a lot. Cry a lot. Okay. Crying babies Our guys get are, worse. you know, they're, yes. Uh, they're just very comfortable. They don't want to write letters. They don't want to contact the congressman. They don't want to contact. I have my job. My wife has a job. And I'm making so much amount of money. So I'm not worried about anything in what's going on. Um, everything is going through smoothly, but yet you are coming to this TV Asia. That means that you are not in a good shape. <laughs> Sorry for our show, for our show right. particularly. Um, and you need to, every time you have to go outside the country, you have to get the stamping. Every time you get the extensions of your uh, visa, you have to go to the employer, uh, and you have to provide the end client letter, vendor letter, whatever not, and. Um, and then every time you have to prove that the position requires a specialty occupation of uh, a, a bachelor's degree every time. All these things can be avoided if we can be just allowed to file the 485 application. That's okay. all we are telling. We are not telling to, okay, there's 140,000 green cards, so give us more green cards. They can't give those more green cards. Right. But of course, they can do one thing. The other thing they can do is that stop counting the family members. They can do it too. So oh, sure. these are the two steps. Let us file the 485 application and let not count the family members. These are the two requests we are making right now because these two can be done without going to the Congress. Got it. And we know Congress, how the Congress is deadlocked right now. Nothing is yeah. getting moved there. Since the time Bush administration came in, the Congress is not doing anything. Anything. They pass budget every 15 years, 20 years, one time. They don't have anything going on. And that too, because it's a budget bill, it doesn't require 60 votes in the Senate, they're passing it. Everything is getting blocked out in the Congress. And then for uh, for immigration, we need 60 votes in the Senate. They were not, there, are, there are no 60 votes for us. There are none. Got it. So, so please yeah. write letters to the administration. The TVH has yes. given links there so that uh, we all can file the 482 application if your I-140 is approved. That's all my request for you at this point of time. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And we will post the links as well uh, at the end of the show. So please take that. Please be serious about this. Have as many people write in uh, as possible. Uh, don't do a copy-paste. Please make sure that you go through the letter, check it, uh, put in your information as well, and then send it out. Tavalkar, I have a, a, a re, sort of a related question, Ali. Um, are U.S. citizen kids allowed to sponsor their parents? Yes, they are. But even, the child... even, why, even when they are kids, uh, are they? No, <laughs> no, okay. no, no, okay. no. They can okay. only sponsor when they become 21 years of uh, old, though. Okay. Got it, got it. So right now, for most of the people who are coming into the United special, especially for Indians, though, the only hope, I mean, other than prior date and other than they making the prior date become current in, a, in the administration, is that the kids becoming 21 and then filing the green card for them. That, that was going to be my question. Why can't we have all these kids, uh, you know, put in the sponsorship papers for their parents? They are. But, believe, believe us, we are filing a lot of the people who came and I'm, I'm sure, a but I, I'm, I'm, sure the volume be, <laughs> I'm sure the volume would be 100x if, uh, you know, kids are allowed to sponsor their parents also. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That may not happen because there are a lot of, uh, that requires a Congress uh, uh, yes, well, I, I was just curious. No mood, no mood of doing that. Right <laughs> yeah, because it's always nice to get this these pieces of information. Because I'm sure a lot of people will be thinking, can my kid, you know, uh, you know, apply for me? Even if it takes like 15 years or 20 years, how does it matter? You know, 
But your point about the kid has to be 21 years of age or more to be able to apply that for you. So that puts a little bit of a dent in the process, but not as long as it is now, you know, yeah. even you might have to wait eight years. So 20 years might not be a bad solution for that. <laughs> All right. Anything else to add, Rahul Garu, before we get started off? No, let's go to questions. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Let's take our first caller for the day. Okay, caller with number ending in 5906. 5906, we're ready for you now. Hello? Hello, Nitya. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hi, sir. We can hear you. Please go ahead, sir. Hello, Rahul. Thank you for taking our call. Um, I have a question regarding my spouse. My spouse is on F1 visa and working on uh, OPT stem extension. And her mm -hmm. I-120, I-20 I is valid till September 24. Mm -hmm. Her employer is willing to file her H-1B next year. And mm -hmm. we need your suggestion on changing her visa status from F-1 to H-4 EAD. Shall we do it now when we have like around a year time? Or we mm -hmm. do it after the decision of H-1B is declared? In that case, we will have around five, six months. When is your H-1B expiring? I'm assuming that you already have an I-140 approval. Yes, my H-1B is expiring in November 25. No, but I definitely recommend it to go to the H-4 EAD and uh, H-4 EAD because your H-1B is expiring in November 2025. Even though she's eligible for the cap cap, if the H-1B is selected in the lottery at that point of time, why wait? What if it's not selected? And then you want to file the H-4 EAD. And you know that it's going to take a long time to get the H-4 plus EAD. So I would recommend that you file right now the H-4 plus EAD because then she is going to get the H-4 plus EAD until 2025 November. And then you can, she can still file the H-1B. People ask me the question, if she's on H-4 EAD, can she file in the master's quota? The answer is yes, she can. Absolutely, she can. Okay. Now, I also have a question about the documents for like, uh, they have different document requirements for F1 to H1B or H4 EAD to H1B? Not much different though. Uh, in fact, the documents are a little bit more for OPT to H1B than H4 EAD to H1B. From OPT to H1B, she needs to prove that she has been continuously working for a job. And for H4 EAD, she doesn't have to prove that thing. So documentation is a little bit higher for the OPT EAD. Okay. Right. But if if I go with H4 EAD for now, it will take mm -hmm. some time. And by that time, yeah. it is possible that the H1B lottery time comes in. Like You're right. Second. You can, you can, you, she, she will apply the H1B lottery in March of 2024. So by that time, mm -hmm. okay. And she gets elected in the lottery, mm -hmm. and by April of so, if she is not, if she is not, if her H4 plus EAD is not approved, she can still file the change of status from F1 to H1P. She can still get the approval, not a problem, even though her H4 plus EAD could be approved between March and October. Uh, H1 will take uh, effect on October 1st of 2024, not a problem. She will move on from H4, even though she was an F1 and the change of status is approved, she will be considered to be on H1B on October 1st. Okay. Got it. And what are the documents needed for uh, electronic registration only? Like the two phases, some terms? Electronic registration requires only passport. That's all that's required for the, and the company needs to give them, uh, the company needs to file for it, okay? There is nothing else required other Thank than the passport copy. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you. For Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for calling us. All right. Nitya Garu, I yes, just sir. want to point out a couple of things, Andy. When there is an OPT option, and then when there is a H1, uh, 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 H4 EAD though, H4 EAD is a better option for the people. Okay. The reason is that H4 EAD doesn't have any restriction. 
Correct. And there were at one point of time the H4 EADs were not getting the approval, extensions were not getting the approval proper time. Okay. But of course, we have this Margarita extensions where they can go and get the extensions. So they should choose to get the H4 EAD. Definitely, OPT EAD is not a good option as compared to the H4 EAD. H4 EAD is a lot more flexibility than that of the OPT EAD. So, Rahul Garu, on, on the H4 EAD, do, are they only allowed to work or can they study also? They can study, they can work, they can flip a burger in McDonald's, they can be a Microsoft CEO, they can open a business, they can work for multiple jobs if they want to, no restriction, none. I'm sure that sounds like music to most ears. <laughs> All right, thank you, sir. Let's take our next caller. Okay, uh, caller with number ending in 4469. 4469, we're ready for you now. Hello? Oh, hi, Nitya can you hear me? Hi, sir, we can hear you. Please go ahead, sir. Oh, thank you. Uh, hello, Rahul Garu. Thank you for your service, Sandy. Yeah, my question is, uh, last week, uh, my wife had a 4.5 interview, which she applied as my dependent. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we provided all the documents for the marriage and, you know, all the details, everything. And, uh, uh, and after the interview, the officer told, you know, I have all the details and you guys did well. And within a week or two, he told he will send me, send us a decision or, you know, whatever the evidence for the needed. So, but we did not get any receipt during the interview. So I would like to know, like, what will be the next step? Usually when I is this, the online blog. Or is it, is this an employment-based immigration you're speaking about interview for a for interview? Yes. Yes. Is the prior, is the prior to date current? Oh, no, it's October 2021. Well, that's, no. Is the prior to date current for your wife? You said employment-based interview your wife has attended, right? Oh, yeah. Already I'm a GC holder, but uh, she was my dependent. She applied as my derivative. So she applies as a derivative, as an employment-based immigration. What is your prior to date? Uh, October 2021. Is it an EB1 that you have, October 2021? Yes. Yeah, yeah, EB1, yeah, that's correct. The prior date is not current, buddy. They cannot approve yes, the green card when the prior date is not current. They cannot oh, yeah, approve it. I can it. understand, but usually, okay, yeah. So I would like to know what would be the status now, because usually after the interview, they might tell us like, whether it's approved or like, you know, we have well, all the evidence. They, or like, they, you know, they, they evidence. can't. They, they can't approve the green card. They can. They cannot say that. Okay, it's guaranteed that you're going to get the green card. Okay, because what if from now on, okay. until she gets a green card, she comes a murder. Mm -hmm. So they can't approve okay. it, saying that because the prior date is not current, is right. They can't say, okay, your wife is everything good. It's pre-approved. They can't give a certificate like that. But as soon as the date, so they will okay. have to wait for the priority date to become current and then approve the green card. They cannot legally approve your wife's green card right now. So I want you to wait until the priority date becomes current and then request the officer, okay. officer, look, there was an interview on that day. You interviewed it. Can you adjudicate my application? That's a request you need to make. But you cannot make that request right now. Why? Because the dates are not current. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that. Okay. Yeah. So the only yeah. question was that, like, we did not get any response, whether it would be any official letter. No response. Or, you know, Normally, the if there is any stuff. additional information, they will give you a request for additional information. If there is a denial, they are okay. going to inform you. Nothing. If they have done nothing, that means that everything is good for you. Okay? Because they cannot approve oh, it. Yeah, that's what I wanted to... Okay, yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted to hear yeah, your, uh, yeah. like, you know, thoughts, yeah. But uh, five, if, if, if you just told one word, like, not two words. Uh, uh, you guys did well. I think everything, uh, all the details I have, I think within a week or two, I'll send, send you my decision. That's what he told me. So I'd like to interpret yes, what would be you, told, I you got know, the point. Position. I got the point that the officer said mm -hmm. that in a routine basis, I will let you know my decision in two, three, two to three weeks. I understand that. But they cannot do it. Legally, they cannot do it. So you just, I want you to just wait and do nothing. Once the priority date becomes current, you can apply for the, you can request office to adjudicate the application. Okay? All right. Okay. Good then. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.
So I'm just hoping it'd be a good news. So I just wanted to hear. Yeah. That looks to be good news to me. That looks to be good news to me. Oh, all right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, you. Cool. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for calling, Andy. Let's take our next caller. Nitya Garu. Uh, ah, so sorry, sorry. I just want to comment a couple of more things. Okay. Think, look, his priority date is 2021. He must be an EB1A, EB1B or EB1C. He got his green card though. He has another alternative to actually file an I-130 and 482 application though. Okay. For his wife. The reason okay. is that what if the priority date never becomes current for him? As I told in, to him that until the priority date becomes current, he cannot get a green card. What if it takes 10 years? What if it takes 20 years for the priority date to become current? So I would suggest to him that he should have another application called I-130 and probably file an inter application called 485 again so that whichever becomes current, then he can choose at that point of time. Because if you look into the family-based immigration though, F2, F2A, the priority date for the, uh, the priority to final action date, uh, the, the priority date uh, for the, uh, the, the, the filing dates are September 2023, which is right now immediately. So, wow. yeah, so they, he can file the 485 application and look into whichever becomes current, then he can choose that option. We'll be the next caller, Andy. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Let's go to our next caller, Andy. Okay, caller with number ending in 4357. 4357, we're ready for you now. Hello? Uh, hello, hello, Nitya Garu, can you hear me? Hi, sir. We can hear you, sir. Please go ahead. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, hello, Rahul Garu. Uh, actually, I have a question. Um, my uh, priority date was 2014 June and applied uh, for advance parole uh, uh, June uh, 2022. It's been mm -hmm. like 15 months, uh, so still didn't get our advance parole. Uh, so do you suggest like uh, uh, applying a new application or uh, any suggestions on this? Um, um, and you got your EAD approved? Uh, yeah, EAD, we got it like uh, in three months. Um, yeah. So we already have... The, the, I, 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 yeah. I don't know why they are... Uh, I don't know why they are not approving EAD in advance parole together. They're taking a long time to approve the advance parole. I don't think so by filing another application, you're not going to do anything. But if you want an advance parole much faster, uh, I mean, not much faster. I mean, you, you want to get an advance parole uh, a little bit quicker than what it is right now. The only way that I can suggest you is to sue the USCIS. Oh, okay. 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 Um, it's going to cost so you money. You can contact your... Um, you can contact Stephen Brown in our office. He takes USCIS to the court okay. every week, a couple of times, and you can join his group of people that go to the court uh, every week. Uh, every month, a couple of times, sorry. Not every week, a couple of times. So <laughs> you can join that group. Um, you can join that group. That's, uh, you know, you can contact him. Oh, Thank okay. you. Okay. Thanks, Rahul. Thank, thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for calling, Andy. Nitya Garu, remember when yes, you sir. used to file advance parole in EAD between 2007 and 2012, somewhere around that period of time, they mm -hmm. used to approve the EAD and advance parole together at that point of time, though. Right okay. now, they are not doing it for most of the, some of the cases, but some of the <laughs> cases they are doing it together. That is okay. not giving a problem. I don't know why they have to segregate the EAD and advanced parole. They should have yeah. applied together. Though. Yeah. Is there anything, uh, you know, in the sort of behind the scenes processing work of EAD versus advanced parole that's different, Rahul Garu? The application, no, there's nothing different. All they need to look into is verify whether Nitya's 485 is pending or not. And the second thing that they have to verify is, is it Nitya or is it somebody else? That's all. There's nothing else. So it's the same thing. It's the same, same thing, essentially. Yeah. Same yeah, thing for EAD and same thing with advanced parole. <laughs> okay. I guess I guess either they're like super swamped with all the applications that are, that are coming in. No, it's not about it's, 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 it's the other way around. Look, when we used to file H1, H4 plus EAD together, we used to get all the things approved at the same time. All of a sudden, they decided, no, we're not going to approve the H4 plus EAD along with the H1B. And that has become a nightmare. No, <laughs> we are going to have a biometrics for every little person, even a four-year kid who is filing an H4 extension, we're going to get the biometrics for the four-year-old kid. And it became a nightmare. So they just added these processes extra unnecessarily. 
So I don't know what's going on with the advanced parole and people who have been waiting for advanced parole for a long time. The only so you can contact the congressman, you can uh, you can contact the ombudsman, you can request them to expedite it. They are not doing it. And if there is a real emergency, though, I mean some you know death in the family or some very uh, seriousness in in your family, you can you can request a USCIS, but then they will only give one month of advance parole. Got it. Okay. Not unlike previously when you were applying, when I was applying, I used to get advance parole and EAD together. That's not the case anymore now. Right. Oh God, I don't know what's happening. So. All right, uh, before we take our next caller, I, I'm just going to go through a couple of questions, Rahul Garo. Sure. Uh, Raj Verma says, after GCI-130 approved for an India wife, what were the next steps? Do we have to wait for the priority dates to be current in the final action state, or is there any visa that we can apply, advance parole? Uh, no, you can't apply. If I'm assuming that she's his Indian wife, or I don't know, he's an American wife and Indian wife. <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> yeah. How many wives yeah. do you have, Raj Verma? <laughs> <laughs> he has an Indian wife. Okay. Now his wife is in India, so uh, his I-130 is approved. Since the filing date is current right now, um, the State Department will process the green card. So first, they will get an I-130 approval. Then they will get an email from the National Visa Center. Look, we are going to request you for the income tax returns. We are going to request you for the uh, we are going to request you for the police report. Be prepared. You'll get an email from. It. Then next, you will get an email from the National Visa Center. The National Visa Center will send an email to you. Hey, hey buddy, you need to pay us the money. Okay, then you pay them the money. Once you pay them the money, they will ask you to submit the documents. The documents include the eight. I-864, the income tax returns, and they will also ask you to submit the police uh, reports and all those things. Once you submit all those things, then they will call you for the interview. Okay. And uh, and one uh, that at that interview, uh, they will have to uh, they will have to go to the interview in the Mumbai consulate. Though the the only consulate that issues the green cards, family based green cards, is Mumbai consulate. So oh. then they have to go to the Mumbai consulate and they have to go with the medicals. They will go through the interview. Interview all there are going to check is whether she's a real wife or not. And that's about it. Well, if she has an Indian wife and a US wife, then they, will, they will reject it. But uh, assuming our guy is a nice guy, he has only one wife, which is an Indian wife, then they will give the green card. That's Got it. it. And actually, technically, they don't give a green card. They will annotate the passport. They'll give some enclosed envelope. With that, they can enter into United States. When they enter into United States in the airport, they will get a green card. They will be taken to. Oh. Uh, uh, they will be taken to a second. Uh, yeah, secondary inspection, and they will get the green card there. So okay. once the I one thirty is approved, though, okay. the whole process to get the green card still will be more than one year. Okay, it's still not bad actually. Yeah. Considering, all right, a uh, question from Ashish Kulkarni. He says his, uh, he's filed EB3, uh, priority date of 2016. He wonders, um, you know, when he should start, uh, you know, doing a new labor and perm. Um, he says he's not working with the same employer anymore, but, you know, what are your predictions, Andy? Aye, you that's going to be tough. Um, yeah. <clears throat> on the, in the, in the history... Uh, I think so. If there is anybody who has predicted anything wrong historically, the worst person in the entire world would be me. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, anything, not just visa bulletin, I'm, and I can challenge anybody. Uh, so, a lot of people project, okay, election, this guy is going to win, that guy is going to win. They sometimes they go wrong, but there are people who have gone wrong so many times in their prediction. I am the number one, and I have a history. I have a proof of TV Asia that will certify me based on all my predictions. So it's very tough for me to say. But That's why you're not walking around with a set of cards and one parrot and you don't Right, like, parrot, you know? yeah. <laughs> I would, I, if it is 2016, though, I definitely would like you to process. If you're not working for the company, if it's 2016, I would definitely would like you to process the labor certification right now. Now, it's a good investment. Uh, because if it doesn't work, you're not going to be in big loss at all. Because uh -huh. what are you going to lose? 
if you are in the let's say for example you file the labor certification and then you say no i don't want to work for microsoft now i'm going to move to coca cola okay so that's fine your priority date is still going to be 2016 and you can go to coca cola and then coca cola then can file it but if yeah. you are with microsoft and microsoft is filing the labor certification it's going to be beneficial for you because if you start 6 months later on it's going to take uh you know two years from six months if you go to try to file right now it's going to take two years from now two years from now got it okay um all right thank you sir let's take our next caller and okay call our number ending in 9384 9384 we ready for you now hello 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 sir hi hi sir please hello. press star 6 and it on mute your line Star six, turn mute your line, sir. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now, sir. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi. Uh, I have a question for uh, Rahul Reddy, sir. Sir, uh, is there any update for uh, uh, visa stamping in in US? And uh, my second question is: uh, uh, Are you still seeing two two twenty one G in Indian uh, stamping at Indian consulate? um uh, 221 gs we are seeing in indian consulate it's normal 221 gs we have been seeing historically from the past 30 years that i've been existing as an immigration lawyer yes there are has there been any uptick in it are there any more 221 gs no no i wouldn't say that especially in the trump era we used to have more 221 gs than what it is right now but with regards to your first question i we do, we did, we did not hear anything from the state department yet about the visa stamping i'm particularly sure i'm particularly sure with the changing with the changing things right now that with the statement what they have issued i'm particularly sure that the visa stamping will be done in united states probably somewhere around january of 2024 is what i'm expecting but uh, yeah i'm i'm very sure that it's going to happen uh okay, okay. sir uh, one more question i want to ask you so for uh, uh, people who have who have gone to india and entered us on advance parole um, would would uh, such people qualify for uh, visa stamping in us by any chance would you know what was the rule before when it used to happen um no i don't know Uh, back in those olden days we didn't used to have this advance parole kind of thing that so much frequently people used to travel so i don't have that experience at all with regards to advance parole will they allow the people to get the stamp my question is if you have an advance parole why are you waiting for the stamping i would not wait for stamping uh, i would just no sir um, we, we are we are not waiting for the stamping uh, advance parole is issued for a, for one year and then you know uh h1b stamping is for 3 years so it, it is more I convenient on h1b stamping and okay i got the point and, yeah and, i i and, uh, i i really, how, how I, really, really I, do, i really don't have an answer at this point of time whether a person who is going to be coming in advance parole will they be allowed to get the stamping in united states i really don't have an answer for you right now okay and sir one last question how long is it taking for the uh, extension to get approved for advance parole anywhere between 2 months to 18 months okay all right and then uh, you, you you, what i suggest people yeah. to do we have had recently an ead uh, 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 sorry we had an advance parole rejection recently because uh, the client filed an advance parole more than 6 months before it expired though but we have had lot of advance parole approvals who have filed more than 6 months before so what we suggest you right now is that if your advance parole is expiring let's say for example in august of 2024 though go and file the extension right now and then do one favor to me file an extension within the 6 months period to file two extensions if your first one gets approved the second one will get denied okay if the first one does not get approved say okay. oh you filed it more than 6 months before then your second one will be approved and and you don't recommend uh, uh, going out of the country while the extension is pending for advance parole right sir um mm, i have a neutral feeling about it uh, if your extension is pending though normally they don't reject the extensions 95% of the time if you travel only in okay. the initial advance parole when you file for an advance parole and then you travel they reject it 
when it comes to the extensions so 95 percent of the time they don't reject it okay thank you okay and there is no premium processing uh, right sir for the advanced mm. parole extension no there is not you can spend that kind, that amount of money and sue the uscis right the amount of money that you okay, spend you, for sir. the premium processing less than that money my steven brown is going to charge and you can get the things resolved there okay next person please right thank you thank you sir thank you so much for calling andy let's take our next caller Okay, call out number ending in 7826. 7826, we're ready for you now. Hello? 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 Hi. Hello, sir. Hi. Sir, we can hear hi, you, sir. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Please go okay, ahead. Okay, hi. Uh, hi, Nitya. Hi, Rahul. Hi, sir. Yeah, can you hear me? Hi. Yes, sir, we can hear you. Please go ahead with your question. Okay, hi. Yeah. Thanks, Nitya. Thanks, Rahul, for your service and taking my call. Uh, yeah, so I have a question for Rahul Garu. Uh, so recently, uh, you know, like my firm got approved, and uh, I mean, I reached out to my employer to file uh, the I-140 in premium, but for some reason, you know, like they are uh, not filing it in premium. So I have two questions. So how much time does it take, you know, like nowadays for getting the I-140 approved? Any, any, anywhere, also, between, yeah. anywhere between two months to eight months. Okay, two months to eight months. And also, I'll go, I had a, a one thing to ask you. So, does it impact like if uh, employer gets an uh, RFE? What impact? Uh, like, I mean, let's say, I mean, uh, I heard like, I mean, uh, while filing the I-140, they are saying like they are getting a lot of RFEs, so that's the reason they are not filing it. No, premium. we're not getting a lot of RFEs. I don't know where you got that impression, though. Now, Especially for the EB1Cs okay. and EB1As and EB1Bs, we do get RFEs a lot more. But for EB2 and EB3, uh, the percentage is less than like 2 to 5%. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I think so that was... Uh, so what did you suggest? Premium. Premium processing. But if the employer is not willing to do, there is nothing much you can do though. Right, okay. Uh, okay, yeah, I think that answers my question, Raul Garo. Yeah, maybe I'll wait. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for calling. All right, let's take our next caller, Andy. Okay, caller number ending in 4493. 4493, we're ready for you now. Hello? Yeah, yeah I'm ready. Uh, I have a question for the... Thank you, Nita Garo. Thank you, Rahul Garo. Sure, I have sure. a question for uh, Rahul Garu. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a question. So my, I was on uh, L1 for uh, three years and then I switched to H1. And my I-140 was approved with the previous company. And uh, now I moved to a different company and I'm not in a very good situation. So I might lose the job. So I wanted mm -hmm. to explore other opportunities. Uh, can mm -hmm. I use the existing I-140 approval to file a compelling circumstances EAD? You can. You can use the I-140 that is approved with company A, even though you're working with company B on H-1B. Assuming that the I-140 was not withdrawn within six months period of time after it's been approved, you can still file a compelling circumstances EAD. But you need to evaluate between compelling circumstances EAD versus the B-2. Which one is a better option for you, though? Because compelling circumstances EAD, you can file it. It's not that tough for you to file it. And approvals are pretty good in there. But compelling circumstances EAD will take approximately six to eight months for you to get the approval. In the interim period, while the compelling circumstances EAD is pending, you cannot work. And once you cross the 60 days of unemployment after you lose the job, though, if you want to switch to the H-1B, you have to go outside the country and get the stamping and come back into the United States. That is the major problem for you. And if you want to extend the compelling circumstances EAD, you can only file six months before and they may not approve it until eight months. That means there will be a gap of employment gap for you there. So when it comes to the B2 application, though, while the B2 application is pending, if you get a job, you can move to the H1B to a different car, different job without any problem. So those things you have to consider very seriously, whether or not you should, whether or not you should go for B2 or compelling circumstances here. 
Okay, sir. Well, now I have a follow-up question. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so basically, now if I if I get fired, I mean, in case if uh, I have to, I mean, leave the job, if they ask me to leave, if they mm-hmm. give me a severance pay, uh, from the date of severance pay, does the 60-day clock sticks? Or um, I mean, uh, I don't know how the I never got uh, fired. So in case uh, if that happens, so when does the 60-day notice happens? I mean, they usually most of the companies use like. Uh, two month severance uh, i'm not sure whether uh, the two month severance will include the rate of exit as of that day or does it extend from the day uh, the, i mean i'm uh, um, i'm not in the payroll i mean i guess Good the question, two months yeah. payroll run i got it i'm not so quite let's sure say, that, let's say for example let's say for example you get laid off on september 15th that means that's the last day of work for you your question is and then you get paid until November 15th of 2023 there is a 60 day grace period when does yeah. it start though at this point of time yeah. the immigration USCIS is interpreting now don't count on me at this point of time they're interpreting that your 60 day is starting on November 15th not September 15th that's how they're interpreting it right now okay okay Okay, thank you. I mean, I, I don't need to get paranoid uh, with 60 days notice. I mean, as soon as uh, they, I mean, I don't report to work, but uh, as soon as they stop the payroll, can I consider that is uh, uh, as, 60 days? As, I mean, as, from that day? As of now, as of now, immigration is considering as November 15th as the start of the 60 days. That's how they are interpreting. Okay? okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for calling, Andy. All right, let's take our next caller. You have an immigration problem, don't get paranoid, come to TV Asia. <laughs> yes. All right, uh, caller with number ending in 5628. 5628, we're ready for you now. Hello? Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Please go ahead, sir. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, hi, Nitya Garu and Rahul Garu. Yes, sir. Yeah, my, prior, my priority date is 2013 June. Um, mm-hmm. My 485 applied in October 2021. Mm-hmm. So actually, so I'm still with the same company and uh, they are maintaining my H1B as well. So recently, like five, six months back, I was asking them to uh, to relocate like in you know, a different state. So mm-hmm. they finally, I mean, they are working with Enoch Agamem and they finally agree and uh, they they did like, you know, H1B amendment. Uh, mm-hmm. They they are not, I mean, they are not suggesting to use EAD and uh, they used like, you know, H1 amendment and it is got mm-hmm. approved. So here mm-hmm. my question is, uh, so I have EAD and AP, but uh, so I have, I'm still on H1B. It, it's recently approved like six months, I mean, like, uh, uh, so one month ago and uh, it is uh, valid and uh, again like you know almost three years so mm-hmm. question here is uh, can I accept uh, any new offer on EAD uh, mm-hmm. while on I'm on H1B with the uh, current company you can so you want to have this wife and you want to have a girlfriend too absolutely you can <laughs> so absolutely <laughs> okay. yeah no problem with it so oh, let's okay. say you're working with Microsoft yeah. on H1B, and now you want to work with Coca-Cola on uh, EAD. Absolutely, you can. You can. No problem with it. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So, and one more thing, Rahul uh, Garu. So, mine is 2013 June. I mean, we don't know, but uh, if I get like you know my priority date is current. So, is there anything expect on my application uh, since I moved like you know uh, different location? But I, anyways, I moved like, you know, after my 485, I applied like maybe after two, one and a half year, I know. Uh, I said you prior to, you're speaking about uh, uh, prediction of the prior to date? Yeah, I mean, if it is get, if my prior to date is current, so is there any uh, effect since I moved location with the same client, if they can Absolute, ask any questions? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. Okay, yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for all of this. Thank you so much for your help of the community. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for calling us. All right. Let's take our next caller, Andy. Nitya Garu, before we go, uh, there are a lot of 
advantages after you file the 485 application. I don't know why this gentleman is filing an H1B amendment. Is you know, Dragman lawyers are definitely benefiting with it. Uh, but but uh, if you look into it, though, if, they, if you change the location on EAD, you don't have to file. You will not have any problem for the green card. Unlike H1B, every time you change the location, you have to file an amendment. For the green card, you don't have to. Got it. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Rahul Garu. Let's take our next caller. Caller with number ending in 4795. 4795, we're ready for you now. Hello? Hi, Nitya Garu. Hi, Rahul Garu. Thanks for taking up Hi, my call. Are you able to hear me, right? We're able to hear you, ma'am. Thank you for calling. Please go ahead. Yeah, my question is regarding the uh, GC EAD and advance parole. I have heard uh, Rahul Garu answering the previous uh, caller uh, regarding that, but mine was based on the extension. Um, so we've been hearing a lot of uh, different versions regarding the extension because some are saying that we got extended within one week and some are saying that it's taking more than seven months. So our GC EAD and EAP, we got a combo in 2022. Our priority mm -hmm. date is um, September 14, sir. And uh, we have, uh, we are planning to apply it in October as April. By April, it's going to be like getting to expire. So mm -hmm. my question is that, yes, yeah. So my question is that if we uh, uh, apply it for the extension in October, and in case we need to travel, we have, because we have a senior uh, parents and in-laws back in India, so we might need to travel over there. So what are the pros and cons? Like what is the... Uh, you're speaking there? about between travel between October and April is what you're speaking about, is it right? Not after uh, No, 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 no. In case... You no, no, after April, because uh, until April we have this uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, advance so, parole, right? So we need not worry yeah, about that. I, so after that. I, I want, if you want to travel it, though, the best solution would be that you sue the USCIS. After three months, your for it, uh, advance parole is pending. You take them to the court. And it's not that expensive to take them to the court, though. Especially at Radian MPC, what we do is that we club together because it's not that easy to file a court case, serve the notice to the USCIS. Um, it's not that it's, it's expensive. So what we do is that we club together with the people and then make it a discounted price because well, if we charge 1,000, I'm not giving you the actual fees, if we charge 1,000 to the client, though, if we have to file one case, if we file 10 cases, it will not cost us 10,000. It will only cost us 2,000. So what we do is that we distribute it among the people and we charge $300 for each person and gave 1,000 extra for us too. So that's what we do. So you should try to look into suing the USCIS for the delay of, the, of that. You're right. And sometimes they will approve the case within three months. Sometimes they're taking 17 months to approve the advance parole. Now, we are noticing the EADs have no problem. They are approving it somewhere around three to five months period of time. And people can work when the extension is pending. We all know the rule about that, especially the TV yeah. Asia audiences know the rule. But when it comes to the advance parole, you cannot travel on advance parole once advance parole expires based on the receipt notice. You may want to consider suing the yeah. USCIS. And uh, what's the probability of positive outcomes that if we sue that? Because uh, we'll be in a different I would, I would situation when we hear I something would, bad about our... I would, uh, I would recommend to contact <laughs> Stephen Brown. I don't want... He doesn't want me to speak anything about it, but he's been pretty good in getting the advance paroles. So that's all I can tell you. Okay? So this is the only this is the only solution. Like there is no uh, there is nothing we can um, do about it. Like uh, you so can that... request a congressman. Ninety nine percent of the time they don't honor it. You can request the ombudsman. Ninety nine percent <laughs> of the time that doesn't work. You can request them to expedite and approve you for the two years advance parole. Ninety nine percent of the time it doesn't work. So you have that one percent chance in those things you can try. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so uh, while uh, dropping the application or while saying that uh, USCIS can we travel, so all the question is about the travel. Oh yeah, so. absolutely. Well, when when you sue the USCIS, can you travel between October and April of two thousand and twenty-four because you have an advance? Absolutely, you can. Can you travel after? Oh, okay. October, after April. If you sue after April, if, if, the, if, the, if you sue the USCIS and, the, and you have not got a decision at that point of time, can you travel? No, you cannot. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, okay sir. Got it. 
Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for calling, Andy. Okay, let's thank take you, our next sir. caller. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. Nitya Garo, I just want to point out how this uh, taking the USCIS to the court typically works, not guaranteed though. When we take them to the court though, they have 60 days to respond to the lawsuit though. Okay. And in so, because they're supposed to adjudicate the application within short 30 or 40 days or 60 days at the maximum, instead of responding, what they do is that, I mean, they adjudicate the advance parole and they will come to us and say, hey, Rahul, why don't you withdraw the application? I'm not guaranteeing that this happens all the time, but that's what they typically do. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> but people have to give us 60 days. Now, 60 days, we have to file the court case and then we have to serve the USCIS. The time starts from the time we serve the USCIS and it takes about one, uh -huh. three or four days for us to serve the USCIS. Okay, thank you Rahul Garu. This is all very informative Andy. and and just, you know, um, one uh, tidbit I would like to definitely share with all our viewers is if there is an attorney refusing money from you and saying, you know, keep your money and this is a better option, maybe try to do that and listen to him rather than the guy who keeps saying, bring me all your money and I will keep you on an H1 or keep you on this and keep you on that and not let you get ahead in life. So Rahul Garo, I know it's the middle of the show, but thank you so much, Andy, for sacrificing your mansion so that we can continue with our living our American dream, Andy. Thank you. Uh, okay, call away number ending in 8180. 8180, we're ready for you now. Hello? Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Hi, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, Rahul. Hi, Nitya. Uh, uh, Rahul, I have two questions for you. So, mm -hmm. my wife is a primary applicant uh, with a priority date of August 2014. And mm -hmm. in 2022 beginning, we filed our 485. Uh, and then my wife got her green card in uh, August 2022, and I did not receive mine. So now she is planning to change her job. So what happens to my 485 in that case, if she changes her job and she go to a different employer? Absolutely not a problem. You will still get the green card when the priority date is current though. However, I don't want you to wait in line. I want you to wait in a different yeah. line where the filing dates are September mm -hmm. 2023 right now. She should file an I-130 application and probably within a month or so, you should, should file the 48 application. In which case you'll be in two lines. Typically the F2A has always been current 90% of the time, at least 80% of the time. So I don't want you to wait because 2014, who knows? Do you have a children? How old are they? Uh, uh, we just had a baby. He's a US citizen. Sounds good. You just have a baby. Most probably your baby yeah. will file a green card and get you the green card. It could happen. I mean, it could. So I don't want you to wait for the baby to become 21. Why can't your wife file an I-130 and 485 for you right now? You see my point? So, uh, our only... Our only concern was that that will mess up the process of our existing 485 because I'm already working no. on EAD. No, it does not. Okay. No, it does not. Both will okay. go parallelly. Whichever comes first, they'll give you the green card. And then that I-131 and 485, we can file ourselves or do we need a lawyer for that? That's up to you. I-131, I uh, you're speaking of I-130 and 485 or I-131? Which I, if it is I-130 and 485, I strongly recommend you go with a lawyer. If it's I-131, which is an advanced parole and EAD, it's up to you though. For I-130 and 485, I strongly recommend you go with a lawyer. Okay. So, so do you do you recommend I-130 and 485 or do you recommend I-130 and do the process in India and Mumbai? Definitely not India and Mumbai, no because that's a very lengthy process once a priority date becomes current. I would recommend to file an I-130 and 485. Now, it's not current right now, but most probably it will be current in October. If it's not current, just file an I-130 and once a priority date is current, you can file. Now, let me tell you one thing. The filing dates for I-485 for the I-130 under the EB uh, uh, F2A, sorry, is actually September 1st of 2023. I mean, we are September 10th, you know, 
how long it takes. You just file an I-130, you get a receipt notice, and you file a 485, that's it. Okay? Oh, and then uh, we get uh, EAD and advanced payroll for that as well? Absolutely, you get it. Okay? Perfect. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir, thank you so much for calling, sir. Nitegaru, about 5 to 10% of the people, you remember when we filed the green card, my wife and I got the green card at the same time, and it should be the same thing for most of the people for us. But these people are, I don't know what they did. For some people, they approved the wife, they didn't approve the husband. They should have yeah. approved both the people though. Right. So, so for them, filing an I-130 and 485 would be an ideal situation for them. Got it, got it. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, let's take our next caller. Okay. Caller number ending in 0142. 0142, we're ready for you now. Hello? Please press star 6 to uh, unmute. Star 6 to unmute. Hello? Yeah. Hi, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, ma'am. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, um, hi Rahul. So um, actually, my situation is like uh, I have uh, I have filed my 485 uh, with my mm -hmm. previous company, and when mm -hmm. in October 2020, and my priority date is December um, 2014. So oui. the thing is that you know when I filed my 485, I was not working for that company. I was with some other company. I just I'm your voice. Hello, ma'am, your voice is cutting out a little bit. Can, can, you, you, can, you re can you restate that a little bit slowly, please? Um, yeah, so I'm saying that my priority date is um, December 2014, and I filed mm -hmm. 485 in October 2020 when my date was current. Um, so I filed with my previous company, my old company, where my I-140 was approved, and I was mm -hmm. not working with them at the time of filing 485. I was mm -hmm. with another company. I just requested them, and they were kind enough to file my 485. So my question is now: I'm currently on H1B with my another company. So if I get another offer, and I never worked for my previous company when they filed my 485, is that okay? Can I take another offer on EAD? Ab I do have EAD. You can. Absolutely, you can. Can so you I don't have file to work, the I don't have to work for that company for six months. No, you don't have to. So it's only the job offer that is required for you to get the green card application. It's only the job offer that requires to file the 485 application. So you filed 485 application with company A, which you did not work at the time of filing the 485 application. You're working all yeah. along with company B. Can you accept to company C with an EAD? Absolutely, you can. Absolutely, you can. You have no problem with it. USCIS has a memorandum that clearly explains whether you are working for company A at the time when you file the 485 is completely irrelevant in giving you the green card. It's only the mm -hmm. job offer that is required from company A. They gave a job offer. Even if they take the job offer back right now, since your job offer was there at the time and they filed the 485 application, since the job offer was there at the time, after 100, within 180 days after you file the 485, you absolutely are good. You can join company C. No problem with it. So um, then they filed 485. I was not working with them. So you I know. Six you are you not working to... for company A at the time when you filed the 485. You were not working for company A after six months after the 485 has been uh, filed. You never yeah. work for the company after you file the 485 for company A. I am aware of that. Yeah. Okay, so there will not be any okay. issue later on in 485J no. or any other... Not legally, any other not, legally. Uh, not legally, not okay. legally. The uh, okay. job offer is there for you, absolutely you should not have any problem, okay? Yeah, I did work with them for five years. I know, so no, 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 that's... The, time of filing the, the, the fact yeah. that you worked five years before is also irrelevant. Even if you have never worked for the company, okay. you still will get the green card, okay? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for calling, Andy. All right. I have a couple of questions I want to take, Rahul Garu. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Jim Joe says, uh, my perm got approved, but my employer won't file in premium. 
Um, how much time is it taking for I-140 to be processed? Is there something I can uh, do? Yeah, it's about uh, five to eight months is the process right now. Five to eight months. And is there something that he can do if the employer won't file in premium, sir? No, nothing. Okay. The only employer can file it. He cannot file it. Ah, okay. All right. Um, Atul Mohan, uh, priority date is June 2015. Uh, presuming date may not become current. This is a WWRD question. What would Rahul do? A, go to Canada or India for one year and become eligible for EB1C. Or B, change job with salary increase but restart the GC process and wait. I feel like KBC host now. But Good question. <laughs> yeah, I, um, if, if, I'm, if I'm assured to get the EB1C, with the company, if I'm reasonably assured, not there's no guarantee, I'm going to go to Canada or India for one year and come back. Okay. That would be what I would do. Instead of salary increase, though, the options he has given is two options, salary increase yes. and go to Canada and come back. Definitely, I'm going to take the Canada option and I will take the option of going to India or Canada. And if I have reasonably assured, if I have at least 25% hope that they're going to file an EB1C, then I would do that. So, Rangar, is this the one where you're an international manager? That's right, multinational manager. They should be managing, I mean, I would say at least 10 people to 15 people is what I strongly recommend. People, if they are uh, managing those things uh, in India and when they come back into the United States to do the same, same thing, then it would be EB1C. One thing, Nitya Garu, what we have noticed, the EB1C approvals is that they are becoming more easier right now with Biden administration than what it used to be there before. Though. In fact, EB1A is also, we are very surprised the amount of approvals that we are getting in EB1A. Oh, okay. um, so we strongly recommend people to urge for it. In fact, there is a, I've seen some YouTube videos, not, <laughs> I won't, we are not part of it. Uh, but they are telling that they are advising the USCIS not to approve more EB1Cs. Why? Why? Because EB1C only has 40,000 green card every year. So if they approve more EB1Cs, what they are telling is that all EB1s are in one category. Though. When you apply for the I-140, you categorize yourself as an EB1A, EB1B, or EB1C category. Though. Yeah. But the EB1 itself has only 40,000 green cards. What oh. they're telling is that, let's say, for example, if somebody got a Nobel Prize award, okay, mm -hmm. they are unable to get the green card because of the priority date backlogged because EB1Cs are getting approved, is there what, what their argument is. Oh, okay, okay, okay. This is interesting. So, um, so they, they, instead of multinational manager people getting the green card right now, they want the Nobel Prize and Oscar Award winner people to get the green card. More is their argument. Okay. So they are advising the USCIS to not to approve many EB1Cs. That's EB1C, what they're advising. Okay. Yeah. Got it. I'm okay. not, I'm not, I'm not for it. I'm just telling you what's going on there. So at that level is where the EB1Cs are getting approved right now. So I advise people to try to you know go to India. It's a good question right now. If it's 2015, priority date somewhere in uh, March of 2015, it may take a long time. I would take a shot at going to India or Canada and possibly to Canada if it's an option and then come back and then try to get the green card. Got it. And sir, is is only India and Canada an option or is it just anywhere internationally? Anywhere, anywhere. Surprisingly, last time when we, we in the last show that we had, there were a lot of people going to Mexico also. There. Yes. Yeah, that's oh, an option okay. too. That's an option too. So keep your option yeah. open, guys. Maybe the tropics are going to be more suitable than, you know, old Canada right now. But uh, yeah, let's take our next caller on this note. Thank you, sir. Let's take our next caller. Okay, uh, caller with number ending in 1617. 1617, we're ready for you now. Hello? Hey, Hintia, here I Hi, sir. Please go ahead, sir, we can hear you. Hey, hi. Yeah, I have a quick question. Um, <clears throat> my H1B approved in October 2022 with company B. 
uh, but then L1B also they processed the current company and got approved in January 2023. I came came uh, to US in the L1B instead of H1. So my my question is: Is it possible? Uh, can I ask my current employer to transfer the approved petition on behalf of company A to this current employer? Did did uh, so? Did you got the H1B stamped in the passport or not? No. I just have only the petition approved copy. So, so, so if if you want to go back, if you want to transfer to the company that applied for the H one B within the period of H one B validity, you will have no problem going to that company. If you ask your current company to transfer to the H one B, there is about seventy percent chance it may be rejected. Thirty percent chance it will. The way we read the regulation is that to be counted toward the H one B, you must have the H one B stamping of I ninety four to be counted. So the USCIS may say that since you didn't have the H one B stamped in the passport, since you don't have an I ninety four, you are not being counted with the H one B number, and they may reject the H one B. So that's the possibility for you right now. About thirty percent possibility you will get it. Seventy percent you won't get it. Okay. okay, but uh, but I think my my company will be planning to uh, process new one anyway for the next year. But uh, mm -hmm. is, is it okay? I can approach them. I have a one in the approved one in the different company. They, whether they can. Uh, I, if I would, I would. Issues, right? the, there are some cases where people the USCIS has approved the H one B in your kind of case without going to the lottery again. But then, when they, when they, when you file, when they file the extension, they said, "Hey, you're not been counted properly to the H-1B." They refused it. So, if your company is willing to file the lottery, though, I would recommend going through the lottery. The other recommendation I would do is that go join the company that has the H-1B approval. Those are the two things that I would recommend. Instead of filing the H-1B change of status with the current company right now, I would choose going through the lottery mm -hmm. system. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for calling, Andy. All right. Let's take our next caller. Okay. Caller with number ending in 4493. 4493, we're ready for you now. Hello? Yeah, yeah. I'm ready. I have a question. Um, so, mainly, um, so I, I, my wife is in H4. I am an H1. So, this is a follow up question. So, previously, I called. I forgot to ask this question. So in case if I lose the job, can she continue to work on H4 or does she lose the status? 60 days. Until 60 days, she can continue working on the H4 if you lose the job. Okay, but if I get a transfer over, do I need to do any paperwork for her? The H4 no. ID, does it expire? Do no. you have to remove it? No, sir. If the H, when is the her H4 EAD expiring? Uh, her H4 EAD, I mean, uh, it's uh, my H1 application, uh, so it is uh, approved till uh, 2025, uh, April. Absolutely. No. But uh, if has, I lose the job... Yeah, then, if you lose the job, okay. she has 60 days for you to find a job. She can continue within the 60 days. And if you get another job within that 60 days, though, she doesn't... She can continue working, absolutely not a problem, until April of 2025. And in, in the interim period, I'm assuming that you're going to file for H4 and EAD for her and get an extension. Okay? Yeah, so do I have so, to do the H4 EAD paperwork also along with uh, just H4? Even the EAD you paperwork can. I have to do, right? You, you can, you can, okay. because it's expiring in 2020, uh, 2025 and you're going to get the H1 extension 2026. Yeah, you can file it. But even if the extension is not approved, though, she can continue working until April of 2025. Thank you. Okay, sir. And uh, okay, sir. One more question. So, in case if uh, I get a job in a different state, if I move to that state, does my wife uh, need to come with me, or can I have my wife work in a different state, and then I live in a different state? Is that possible? Is that okay? Oh, yeah. Absolutely not a problem. Uh, not a problem. Okay. Thank sir. you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for calling, sir. Yeah. All right. Let's take our next caller. In 9284. Caller with number ending in 9284. We're ready for you now. Hello? Yes. Hi, ma'am. Hello? Yeah. Hi, ma'am. Go ahead, ma'am. 
Hello, this is Helen. Uh, uh, I'm a registered nurse working in a hospital. I work in H4EAD. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm planning to apply an independent H1. Uh, um, I'm asking my employer regarding it. Um, I don't know the process. Is it like uh, I, they have to apply H1B and then do a EB3? Well, H1B and EB3 are two different things. So they can file an EB3 for you right now. It may not do that much benefit for you because your husband already has an I-140 approval. The problem with the mm -hmm. nurses and H1B is that there, are, there is one kind of H1B, there is another kind of H1B. There is 500 H1B reserved for nurses. Only if you work for particular hospitals, though, okay? There are selected okay. hospitals that are approved for it, and then you have to work for them, and then they are eligible for the 500 nurses. Now, if you don't work for those particular hospitals, though, then the problem with the nurses is that for nurses, it doesn't require a specific degree as a minimum requirement. The requirement in USA for nurses is that an associate degree in nursing is good enough to get a nursing license. So what the USCIS will say is that, look, since it does not require a degree as a specific requirement for the nurses, we're going to reject the nursing things. Uh, we're going to reject the H1B though. So there are some positions, for example, head of the nurse or whatever those different qualifications that are there high level nursing things, definitely there is a chance for it. But for a regular registered nurse though, we get very, very frequent H1B rejections. Oh, okay. Is that a EB3 visa is different from H1B? EB3 is a green card. Now. There is called non-immigrant yeah, visas. Non-immigrant visas are H1, L1s, O1s, P1s, Q1s. Those are considered as non-immigrant visas. Immigrant visas are green card, in our language, green cards. So EB3 is a green mm -hmm. card thing. Are you from India? Yes. Yeah, EB3 is backlogged to all the way to 2000 and somewhere 11 or so for EB3 though. Mm -hmm. Okay. So since they are backlogged mm -hmm. to all the way to 2011, so EB, uh, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry, not 2011, it's 2009, backlogged. So it doesn't do any benefit if you file an EB3, you get an I uh, labor and I-140 approval. You won't get an employment authorization based on that until your priority date becomes current, okay. which is backlogged by about 14 oh. years right now, and which is expected to back backlogged by about 40 or 50 years by the time your priority date becomes current. So practically, that's not the better option for you for employment authorization. H-1B requires mm -hmm. that the degree, either you work for those particular companies or you are in a higher level in a nursing position to say a degree is a minimum requirement, okay? You're not a nurse okay. practitioner, okay. Is right? You're not a nurse practitioner, is right? No. No, okay, no. I, think, okay. I have master's, okay. but I have to, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah, so it's okay. going to be tough for you to get uh, them, okay. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for calling. Okay, uh, Rahul, there are a couple of, quick couple of questions. A uh, question from Sarita Nagesh says, uh, my H-1B visa stamp on the passport expired a few years ago. H-1B extension 797 is approved. Do I have an option for travel outside and I ask extension at the port of entry without having to visit a consulate outside the U.S.? Where is she going to go? If she is going to go to Mexico or Canada and she's coming back within 30 days, she doesn't have to go for stamping. But if she is doing anything else other than what I speak, Canada or Mexico, she's doing anything else. If she goes outside the country, she has to go for stamping. She can't come back to the border post and request a visa there. They won't give it. Got it. Got it. So if she's traveling only Mexico or Canada and within yeah, the And coming back within 30 days. 30 days, okay. All right. Uh, okay. Question uh, from, so, so just related to that previous question, can she first travel to Mexico and then go from Mexico to India and then come back to Mexico and then come back in? Ah, okay. I'm sure they'll have that question in mind. <laughs> yeah. It's been up in my head. All right. Uh, question from Harry, sir. Is I'm on L1A and this is my sixth year. I-140 is still pending. Can I request employer to apply for 485 and EAD? 
Oh, what is the, is the, if the prior date is not current, you cannot file a 484 application. Okay, and he says uh, L1A 60 or I-140 is still pending. So, no. is that a problem for him? Yes, it's a problem for him because if the I-140 is approved also, Nitya Garu, mm -hmm. unlike H-1B, where you can extend the H-1B beyond six years on the beyond six years, they, they can extend the H-1B for whatever time period of time, that is not available if it is an L1A. L1A expires within seven years. After seven years, if the priority date doesn't become current, they don't get a EAD. Unfortunately, they will have to leave the country. Okay. Got it. That's another reason why we're recommending to make the priority dates current. Hope our audiences are going to cooperate and write letters. The link is already oh, provided. With okay, emails. okay, okay. Now they have an added incentive. So everybody who's on an L1A also start writing those letters now. Yeah. Now, now. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Let's take our next caller ending. Okay. Caller number ending in 7615. 7615. We're ready for you now. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Hi, Hello? sir. We can hear you, sir. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Please go ahead, sir. Sir, uh, my question is, um, uh, my uh, priority date is in October 2015. Uh, my son is uh, aging out next year, next to September 2024. Um, is there any way, uh, if we are not able to file by that date, is there any way we can still protect him in the, no. Uh, no. the filing? No, we cannot then he has to swim like just like you and it's going to be more harder for him than for you because the priority dates are going to be more backlogged for him because he belongs to India, he's born in India. I urge you that you write a letter to the congressman to make priority dates current in October, please. And I would want your son to also write a letter why he wants the priority date to be current, not just you, the dad, okay? Okay. Okay. So, if, unfortunately, uh, okay. unfortunately, to... if the priority date doesn't become current, he becomes 21. He is not saved under Child Service Protection Act. Then he has to move on to F1. Then he has to be an H1. He has to be my client until I die. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't want yeah, that sir. to happen. Uh... Okay. For filing, uh, requesting uh, to Congress, do I need to reach out to uh, any attorney or? No, that... no, 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 no. You don't have to go through. We have provided, TVS has provided a link at the bottom. It says RN Law Group. You request the US, uh, you request the uh, uh, administration to become the current. No, you don't have to hire a lawyer. You don't have to pay any, any lawyer any money. Absolutely not. No, sir. We are not. We are not no. telling you to do that. Don't pay any lawyer. We have provided it's free. The letters are free. The draft is free. The TVH has provided for you. You don't have to pay any money. No, okay. sir. Okay. Sir, I have uh, another question also. Um, if a uh, filing date becomes current, um, I don't have a birth certificate um, or I get a NABC now. Um, get the NABC. Get a, a NABC file? right now. Okay. Non non availability certificate is non availability of birth certificate is what he's calling as NABC. Yes, you need to obtain it right. Why you can even register though, even if it's not registered 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, you can still register it right now. Absolutely, you can try to do it. If not, non availability certificate okay. along with the two affidavits are good enough. Okay. 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 That okay. is along with the affidavit. It's not just uh, affidavit will do. That's right. Along with the non-availability certificate, get two affidavits. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your answer. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for calling, Andy. All right. Let's take our next caller. Okay. Caller number ending in 9924. 9924. We're ready for you now. Hello? Hello. Hi, sir. Hi, sir. Thank you for calling, Hello? sir. We can hear you. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hello, Namaste sir. Namaste. Hello, Namaste. 
వెళ్ళిపోయాడండి అతను అతని మీద అతను అతని మీద ఈ బ్లూ కార్ నోటీసు తర్వాత లుక్ అవుట్ నోటీసు ఇష్యూ చేసామండి ఇష్యూ చేశారండి ఓకేనండి ఓకేనండి బై బై సూప్రెంట్ ఆఫ్ పోలీస్ రాజమహేంద్రవరం ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ అబ్బాయి సూపరింటెండెంట్ పోలీసా అబ్బాయి అబ్బాయి తండ్రి సూపరింటెండెంట్ ఆఫ్ పోలీసా కాదండి అబ్బాయి సాఫ్ట్వేర్ ఇంజనీరు అతని మీద అతని మీద బ్లూ కార్ నోటీస్ లుక్ అవుట్ నోటీసు ఇష్యూ అయిందండి అర్థమైంది మీరు ఫోర్ బ్లూ కార్ నోటీస్ అవునండి అవును సో ఇప్పుడు మీకు ఇప్పుడు నేను నేనేం చేశాను ఏం కావాలంటే నేనేం చేశానంటే యువర్ ఐసీఈ ఉంది కదా ఐసీఈ హోమ్ ల్యాండ్ సెక్యూరిటీకి నేను రిపోర్ట్ చేశాను అతను మీ అతను మీరు కస్టడీ తీసుకుని అరెస్ట్ చేయండి వాళ్ళు అరెస్ట్ చేయరండి వాళ్ళు అరెస్ట్ చేయరు సో ఇప్పుడు మీకు ఏం కావాలి మీకు వాట్ ఆర్ యూ ట్రై టు అచీవ్ వాట్ ఈస్ యువర్ అడ్వైస్ వాట్ ఈస్ వాట్ మీ మీ సలహా ఏంటి మీ మీ ఏం చేస్తే బాగుంటుంది ఎలా ఎలా వెళ్ళాలి ఫస్ట్ అతను అరెస్ట్ అతను టు ఇండియా అతని అమ్మాయిని రోజు పెట్టి చెప్పాడు సార్ బెస్ట్ ఏంటంటే మీరు లుక్ అవుట్ నోటీస్ ఒకటి కాకుండా ఇండియన్ కౌన్సిలేట్ కు యుఎస్ ఇండియన్ కౌన్సిలేట్ కు రిపోర్ట్ చేయండి రిపోర్ట్ చేసి పాస్పోర్ట్ చేశారండి వెయిట్ ఫర్ హిమ్ కౌన్సిలేట్ రిపోర్ట్ చేశాను అర్థమైందండి ఫోర్ నైన్టీ ఎయిట్ కేసులు ఫోర్ నైన్టీ ఎయిట్ కేసులు అండి you have to wait for him to ah. come to india ikkada veellu uscis or action theesukoraana meeda 498 kinda avune ah so adanu look out notice me theesukovali kada cheppinru meer cheppinru look out look out notice isthar kada cheppinandi aina gani vaalla arrest cheyaru atane vaalla tar arrest cheyaru so ah. the only way is when he comes to ah. india he'll be detained until that you cannot do anything ah. okay ఇంకో పని ఏం చేస్తా అంటే ఒకవేళ మీరు డైవర్స్ ఫైల్ చేసుకుంటే మీ కూతురు విజిటింగ్ వీసా అప్లై చేసుకొని యుఎస్ కు వచ్చి డైవర్స్ ఫైల్ చేసుకోవచ్చు అన్నట్టు కొన్ని ఏమైందంటే యుఎస్ లో డైవర్స్ ఫైల్ చేస్తే కొన్ని అడ్వాంటేజెస్ ఉంటాయండి అంటే పర్టికులర్లీ కొన్ని స్టేట్స్ మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద స్టేట్స్ మన కాలిఫోర్నియా కానీ టెక్సస్ కానీ కొన్ని స్టేట్లు ఏంటంటే కమ్యూనిటీ ప్రాపర్టీ అన్నట్టు ఇండియాలో డైవర్స్ ఫైల్ చేస్తే ఏముంటుంది అంటే ఆయన పేరు మీద ఏం ప్రాపర్టీస్ ఉన్నా ఆయనకే వచ్చేస్తాయి మీ కూతురుకి ఏమి రావు అదే టెక్సస్ గానీ లేదా కాలిఫోర్నియా గానీ మీ కూతురు కనుక ఇక్కడ వచ్చి ఫైల్ చేస్తే మొత్తం అసెట్ ను సగం సగం చేస్తారు అడ్వాంటేజ్ ఉంటది దానికోసం విజిటింగ్ వీసా తీసుకొని రావచ్చు మీ కూతురు ఓకేనండి ఓకే ఓకేనండి Okay. They won't take it. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Man. All the very best, Andy. I hope everything works out well, sir. All right. That, that is such an unfortunate situation. Rahul Gaur, you were mentioning about uh, an option of contacting the Indian consulate in the US, right? Right. right. Okay. So, so, so 498 case in that dowry case. So, right. dowry case means the file is not going to arrest you, sir, in India. Correct. సో ఇండియాలో హస్బెండ్ నే కాదు మన హస్బెండ్ వాళ్ళ అమ్మను వాళ్ళ నాయనను వాళ్ళ చెల్లెలను అందరూ అరెస్ట్ చేస్తారు మనకు తెలుసు ఫోర్ నైన్టీ ఎయిట్ కేసు కాకపోతే ఇతను యుఎస్ ఉన్నాడు కాబట్టి యుఎస్ఈఐఎస్ కానీ ఐఎస్ ఇమిగ్రేషన్ కస్టమ్ ఎన్ఫోర్స్మెంట్ కానీ సిబిపి కానీ వాళ్ళ అరెస్ట్ దే ఆర్ నాట్ ఇంట్రెస్టెడ్ ఇన్ ఫోర్ నైన్టీ ఎయిట్ కేసెస్ legally staying here they don't yeah care, right? they won't but the only the only thing they can do is that when the passport extension comes in then mm. the, US, the the indian consulate will not extend the passport 
excellent okay uh, otherwise when he enters into you know, uh, india though the day hmm. he enters into india he will be arrested on the spot in the airport itself got it got it okay yeah he will be arrested okay. in the airport and will be present to the police station yeah yeah such an unfortunate situation rahul garu yeah. but sir yeah. if you are watching uh, the sir who called just now you choose to unte sir please take uh, rahul garu's advice please inform the indian consulate and the us consulate kadu uscis kadu indian consulate in the us vallaki inform cheyandi vallaki inform chesthe rahul garu cheppinattu itano passport uh, extension gani elthe they will refuse that and he will be forced to come back to india so uh, ala meeru uh, work out chesukochandi So sorry, Andy. So sorry. All right. Uh, let's take our next caller. Okay, caller with number ending in one five seven three. One five seven three. We're ready for you now. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, yeah. Hello. Hi, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. Please. Hello, ma'am. Uh, hi. Hello, Rahul Garu. Ah, uh, sir. My question is, Andy. Uh, I was on H one B during two thousand twelve, Andy. and uh, when i was working with company a i have filed my eb2 green card with company b and mm-hmm. uh, after that i was working with them almost like you know 5 years with company b who have my approved i140 uh, which is approved in 2015 sir mm-hmm. and uh, yes. now i <laughs> recently i have moved to company c uh, due to uh, like you know uh, contract positions i have taken a full time with mm-hmm. company c sir Mm-hmm. and uh, now my question is if the dates are current uh, if the dates are getting current uh, am i eligible to apply my eb2 uh, gc with company b who have my approved i140 will well they cooperate my, with you actually my cooperate with you will they cooperate yeah. with you yes sir yes sir yeah they will they will sir uh, they will cooperate with i was talking to my employer and hr manager also they can able to provide uh, employment offer letter also after like you know after uh, applying 6 uh, months of uh, so uh, you know i can work with them you around 6 months that they absolutely. mentioned absolutely if your company you were com- working with company a company b filed the green card you were working with company b for yes, whatever period of time now you are working with company c if yes, the sir, company yes, b is willing to file the green card for you when the priority date is current you absolutely okay. can file a green card with them you can no awesome, problem sir. none whatsoever awesome. thank you thank you so much thank and you so much for the you, and i've had like a uh-huh. couple of people selling that the yeah. people have filed the green card even they are not working for the companies can you please write good reviews for these companies please because we always see only yeah, definitely, bad sir. reviews <laughs> yeah bad reviews yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. please they are also from the same place to... where you are <laughs> yeah oh varangal okay um people <laughs> yes, need sir, to know the people need to know about these companies and people need to join these kind of companies that are really good that's okay, okay? Awesome. recommend that awesome, thank you so much and uh, just i have like you know um what do you call a uh, birth certificate and all amendment of uh, all certificates of my and my spouse one also even though she have approved i1 uh, h4 ead also but mm-hmm. uh, just i want to make sure that you know some people were saying because i was checking with company c uh, simply they are saying uh, we cannot start the paperwork at the because i was trying to port my uh, you know approved i140 from company b to company c Mm-hmm. but these people are this keep pending it's been more than 18 months and they are not even started my labor uh, so that's what i was oh, you don't have to worry people. about it you don't have to worry about it you okay. have this company b we need to know about this company b yes, we need all the uh, nice people of tvs and need to know about company b okay thank you awesome sir. thank you so much and just thank one you, more final question sir so mm-hmm. i'm sorry ma'am uh, it's what about right, 485j sir is it is it they have to is they it, have uh, to sign the 485j they have to you're not i don't know what eligibility is when the priority date becomes current company b has to mm-hmm. sign the 485j supplement that's all they need to do okay, okay. and they can provide uh, and they can they are able to i mean they can provide uh, six months of i mean offer letter and all everything right then along um, with that i can file my 485 offer, yeah uh, offer letter is 485j is necessary offer letter is optional okay If they give you the 485, oh, okay, they are sir. the good company. If they are willing to give you the 485, they are the good company. We all need to know about that company. Please announce okay, this company. Sir. Definitely. Okay. Please recommend this company. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Thank sir. you. Thank, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much for calling. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Anil. Thank you, sir. You're so right, Rahul Garu. So much bad happening in the world these days. We have to take a minute and acknowledge the good also. You know. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's, there are a lot of right. good things that happen. People don't report it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. People yeah. are very quick to report all the bad things. Bad and things, it yeah. feels like yeah. our whole world has become toxic. But like you said, we got to stop and take a minute to report the good stuff also. Yeah. So people still have hope, you know, yeah. hope and faith that the you know the system is going to work or something positive is going to come or, or at least there are good employers still out there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So for the folks who've been uh, calling in and uh, for the folks on the live chat as well, um, thank you. Thank you for coming in. But unfortunately, as always, we keep trying to stretch the show as much as possible. But for some time, the time, for some reason, the time keeps running fast here. Rahul Garu, thank you so much, Andy, for being on the show today and for patiently answering everyone's questions. And okay. to all our TV Asia Telugu viewers, please come back next week. Thank you so much for calling in. We really appreciated the fact that all of you lot more of you called in because we were able to get in missing pieces of information. So please continue to do that along with sending in your questions as well. And we'll see you same time, same place next week. Until then, have a great and safe week. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir.